Well, today across the National Hockey League, the King Clancy Memorial Award winning uh, nominees are announced today, 32, and uh, the representative here in Calgary is uh, Michael Backlund, longest serving Calgary Flame, uh, an award that goes to a player who best exemplifies leadership on and off the ice and obviously a dedication in his community. Maybe no one does that better than uh, you. And maybe just first uh, a thought on the nomination and being a uh, one of 32 up for this uh, across the league. Yeah, it's a huge honor. I mean, it feels extra special that my teammates voted and picked me. Uh, it makes me feel you know, really special, so it's a big honor. Well, maybe just a thought on the work in the community. We'll get to some of the leadership first uh, in just a moment, but just when you look at the community and how you know your role within it has kind of grown in your 14 years here in Calgary, uh, how much of a priority and, and why does it mean so much to you? Yeah, no, I... I you know, I came in here in Calgary and I saw what the leaders did, um, you know, had their own charities and uh, as an organization, Calgary uh, did so much, um, you know, with the golf tournament and poker and then all the, you know, they always pushed the players to do things and and talked about how important it is. So coming into Calgary um, right away, I, I learned how important it is for this uh, organization uh, to be a big big leader in the, in the community, so uh, I, I grabbed onto it right away and wanted to make a difference, and like you said, it's been growing over the years, and uh, now I'm one of the, uh, you know, players that have been there the longest and uh, one of the leaders, so it feels good to, uh, you know, do my part and show other young guys or, you know, what, uh, what we do here in Calgary and what's important, and uh, for me, it means a lot to help other people uh, in whatever way it can be. Uh, I know I'm living a privileged life, uh, living my dream. I was dreaming to play in NHL, and I want to help people that are um, going through tough times or not as privileged. So uh, I think it's a responsibility that we have as players. Well, and, and you mentioned uh, you know working with a number of different organizations too, and um, you know obviously ALS uh, Society of Alberta. That's been one of yours, and uh, and Frida's as well uh, for the last number of years. Uh, Special Olympics Calgary, but maybe just specifically to the ALS uh, cause, and obviously you know there's a co combination there uh, with within the organization as well, and our assistant general manager Chris Snow. But what about the work there? Over four hundred thousand dollars raised because of work that you and Frida have done. Um, you know what is the meaning there, and, and just uh, what you've been able to do to help. <clears throat> Yeah, no, it started when I met Frida. Um, you know, when I started talking to Frida before uh, we were dating, um, she told me her mom passed from ALS, and I didn't know what ALS was. And this was just back in 2013, and uh, she had to explain it to me, and I had to look it up. And, yeah. you know, then we started dating, and I got to know this full story even more. And it's just so sad and tragic, and uh, I don't want anyone to have to go through that. And uh, so when she told me that right away, we said we got to do something. And she always said she had a vision. She wanted to make a difference to help people with ALS. Or her ultimate vision is to find a cure sure. uh, or help to find a cure. Uh, she told me that right away. And I said, okay, let's do something. And then she came up with a great idea of hosting all these families at a game. She said it's so important to have these nights where you kind of forget about the disease and enjoy the family or friends. And so... It was her idea coming up with uh, uh, having families come into games, and it was so close to our hearts that um, I wanted to change that to ELS as well. So, uh, and that's been growing as well with a little bit of more production and a little more raising money. Sure, yeah, and, and part of it, the shirt that you're wearing right now, and uh, the memories, which is we've talked about that before, kind of about making memories, and um, and then maybe just you know, and how now Chris and the combination there of what you guys have talked about, and I'm sure you have these discussions, but just to continue to raise that awareness and, and the funds, as you said. Yeah, it's huge. Um, uh, I mean, it's uh, it's still no cure, and. Uh, yeah. Um, they, uh, you know, they're all, every country in the world or most countries in the world working on it and people are collecting money. It's growing more attention, which is good because it's such a terrible disease and or awful disease. So, um, you know, Snow, Snow and his family uh, raised a lot of money and attention as well. And, uh, you know, it's really hard to see what he's going through in his family, um, you know, trying to support him the way we can. And But it's great to see the work they've done as well during this tough time they've been going through. Just one last one for you, and that's uh, yeah, Lily's legacy, because I know that's something that means a lot to you, and, and again, something that you guys have created, uh, you know, with uh, in combination and in uh, partnership with Parachute for Pets. But just uh, you know, to see maybe a legacy though for for somebody in your family that you cherished a lot, and um, you know, to see that that continues to give back as well. Yeah, it was um, Parachute for Pets who came up with it, Melissa, uh, and uh, I thought it was a great idea. We were very honored that she wanted to honor Lily. Our yeah. 
or uh, a little she was special, very special to us, a special dog, and uh, yeah, so it felt uh, it was you know it was a easy thing for us to do and jump right on it and jump on board on it, and uh, uh, it's been a good turnout every Easter to uh, get these Easter baskets uh, and also raising money and awareness and um, helping kids keep their pets when they're in transition. Um, so uh, I think it's a great program, and um, yeah, we're really happy to support it. Uh, and just one last one before I let you go, uh, Michael, and that's just about the leadership. You talked about it, voted on by your teammates. Obviously, that has to mean a lot uh, in terms of you know having that respect. But how much has the leadership uh, part of your you know game on and off the ice, but how, just part of who you are grown here over the last couple of years? Yeah, it's definitely grown since my first day I stepped into this locker room sure. <laughs> uh, with uh, experience, maturity, and, um, you know, feeling comfortable uh, growing within the organization. And uh, so, yeah, um, over there, especially over the last few years here with uh, Gio leaving and then uh, Chucky and Monty last summer, it's and, and you had to take a bigger step on and off the ice, and um, but with excitement. And um, so, yeah, it's uh, it's been a process over the years to – to grow into the leadership role, but uh, I've taken a lot of uh, pride in doing it. And um, yeah, it feels, I'm very honored that the, my teammates, uh, you know, picked me and voted for me. Well, well deserved. Congratulations on uh, being Calgary's nominee and uh, best of luck. Hopefully we uh, win the big one. Yeah, thank you.